monster was actually a man. Poor girl. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know? Crimes and such like. Daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up, but the act of love... It wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation. And the girl... She was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse. All right? Stick to the character. Tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen the ghost. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... Maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck. And he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat. And don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Oh, Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorised. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow, here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here. So I have full authority here to ask you to leave, or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back.
What about the murder that this crowd keeps shouting about? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. And tell me how you do it. You can't even calm this gathered crowd, and as for the police, they're not quite managing it either, are they? You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I'm looking for a young refugee woman. She must be inside the camp. She's with child or was with child recently. Help me find her and I'll help you deduce what really happened here. You may indeed be quite a perceptive fellow, but I still don't see how you can help me here. Just tell the police I'm with City Hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest. Trust me. But first, you'll find my witness. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her, and I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do and what I am responsible for are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on city hall's behalf too? They are, minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island so there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Chooksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harley. Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? Oh, so you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time, but I read the papers. Yes, this whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. So they keep these refugees under a bridge like Prover... Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewkesbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office, and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paperworm sent to count money and get food for archive mould. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home as if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. 
And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. Clearly a left handprint here. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. A fresh crack, as if the crate was hit recently. Someone bled profusely here. A man's footprint. A heavy boot with a worn-out sole. Police boots. Always happy to trample evidence. A carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. No hint of blood or impact. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. Someone was dragged against their will. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. I'll use it to create a solution. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading.
if they find out about the pass. Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers... Sherry, just look at this. Living quarters in a sewer. What kind of a genius bureaucrat came up with this idea? Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. I've collected all the... Ink Now to prepare the first aid solution. Thank you. This should make you feel better, my friend. Now remain lying down and drink as much water as you can. Well done, Sherry. At least he won't die from the infection. Someone was dragged against their will. Well, carnelian agate beads. A traditional African adornment. Dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? A steel dirk. Sharp. 
a common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however the wound is too messy to be certain. Heavy boots, with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping John. A violent death. This man, limping. Cold us. I think we're onto something here, John. You still here? Your problem, not mine. Your problem, not mine. I've already told you all I've learned. The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. What a pleasant man this Mr. Tewkesbury is. Refugees have been detained and will not leave until all the circumstances are clarified. I'm busy. Don't you have papers to fill? I hope I'm not making a grave mistake in trusting you, Mr. Holmes. Malpal, soaked with salt water. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. You know what? I'd like to understand. What? How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place?
It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. A single Malpal butt. Roadman cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. Still here? Inspector, I believe I can aid your investigation. I know who the dead man is and what really happened here. You do? Well, good for you. But I'm afraid I'm not the one you need to share your findings with. Speak to Mr. Harlow here. He's the one responsible for settling things in the camp. You don't even care to listen? Oh, I do care. And maybe even more than I need to. But I'm only here today to lock the place up, question witnesses, and file the facts. It's sad, but coming up with conclusions is not among my tasks here. You fellows at City Hall do that. Anyway, speak to the supervisor. I'll just stand by and listen to what you have to say. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? 
The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger. But somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. Do you think one small clock can make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nayla? Nayla. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Naylor's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Naylor, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Naylor? My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Naylor doesn't want his meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. At least some of your kind have a heart. Thank you again. Can you satisfy my curiosity? They often take us from the camps to work. Most don't mind, though. It's the only way we get a glimpse of freedom. So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freely entered the camp to take a refugee out. At least it was certainly his last time. My gut tells me that we'll learn more about this ring when we find out where the thug came from.
If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? On my way here, I was wondering whether you might regret what you did. I tried my best to retain at least a shred of faith in humanity. I had hoped that you would hear her scream, see her face in your dreams, or at least once ask yourself how Nayla might feel. Who? Neither of my hopes were fulfilled. Why are you here? You defiled a girl who was with child. Don't even pretend that you regret what took place. Do you wonder why I came here? It is because I am disgusted with people like you, and the only way in my mind to rid the world of your ilk is to see you hanging from the gallows. All right, all right. Is it about money, as you said in the letter? I have it, all right? There's no need for violence. I've never written a single word to you. As you can see, I have a more direct approach. That letter... it wasn't from you. So what do you want? Answers, to start with. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? <laughs> That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my... sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's... rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just... bad circumstance. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait! You don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio? Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people, I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. 
They said that in the art gallery at Caravansary there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake. But I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees, find them decent homes, give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes, all right, I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Nayla deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think... You can decide what's... for these people. Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. 